All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Coffee and Craps with John here at Pro Craps on Casino Gaming TV. Good to see you all. Um, yeah, well, wow, there's a really big delay, it looks like, today with the cameras. That's kind of strange. Um, well, sorry, you won't have to look at my face too long. We'll be at the table most of the morning. But anyway, um, happy Monday. Um, actually, really interesting and amazing weekend that I had. Um, before we get into the announcements, I'll, I'll talk about some of that stuff. Just one of those weekends where it all kind of came together, you know? I had um, I had a really good conversation with three different people. Um, I actually met with, I really can't say who, but I don't, I don't want to give them, th put their names out there, but I had some great, great, great phone conversations with a couple of other YouTubers this weekend, an up and coming YouTuber, um, one of our one of our subscribers and I had a nice chat over in, over in the Discord voice chat, which by the way, get on Discord so you can do the, the voice chat thing. We had a great, we talked for like an hour. Um, and it was really just cool to kind of just chill and hang out and, and do all that. Um, that was really, really fun, just to kind of disconnect from like having to think about my channel and just kind of just talk craps and talk YouTube, and it was really kind of cool. Um, good weekend of basketball. My, I, I've, I've told this story, so, so here's my, my kind of brush with fame story for the week. My son, you know, he played baseball in college. He, his friend, when he was in, boy, he was probably nine to, nine to 16 years old in that age range, um, there was a kid that we, we had played against. We had met them. They're from all the way across the state. We played in tournaments with these guys all the time. Got to be good friends with the family. Their daughter, Haley Van Lith, plays for Louisville, um, and they're now in the Final Four. So we got to watch them, or they're, I'm sorry, they're in the Elite Eight. They'll be in the Final Four after they win tonight. So check out women's college basketball tonight. Look for, um, watch Louisville. Look for number 10, Haley Van Lith. She's awesome. Um, it's cool to like watch them, watch that family, you know, along with our family, kind of the kids grow up and stuff. And so I'm rooting really hard for Haley. Uh, that'd be super cool. And I saw this morning, um, so uh, uh, Chris Dicey, Jen, you'll see this uh, in, in your news coming up here, but it looks like um, a kid from the Phantoms uh, is going to be playing on the Flyers. I think they're going to bring him up. Um, his name is Wyatt Wiley. Um, I actually coached him. So when I coached Zach in hockey, my son in hockey, Zach played hockey from he was five till he was 12, 12 or 13, 13 years old, I guess. And so all those years, Wyatt was on our team um, in our little, you know, whatever rec team that we had. Um, and it got to the point where Zach was like really good at hockey, really good at baseball. We kind of chose baseball just for whatever reason. Um, but Wyatt, I coached for all those years, just as a little kid, you know. Um, and now he's actually going to go pro. He's going to be, he's been playing for the Phantoms in Philly. He's going to be on the Flyers. I think they're going to call him up for the end of the season run here. So or I say the end of the season run, the end of the season fade away into the darkness, but I'm stoked that he's gonna be, uh, he's gonna be playing in the NHL. So that's kind of cool. It was really a neat weekend. And of course, I got to, saw my, I got to see my girl yesterday. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, Sandra Bullock and I have a thing. Um, she doesn't know it yet, but um, we have a thing. So uh, I got to see Sandy's movie yesterday, uh, Lost City. Man, that was a funny freaking movie. If you have a chance to go burn a 20 bucks, go see Lost City. That movie was was great. And it was just like, my wife's like, hey, let's go to a movie and get some dinner. I'm like, okay, uh, randomly, we just did that. And it was awesome. So we actually just bugged out and and went and uh, saw a movie. So it was cool. Um, yeah, and also, uh, so, oh, man, I'll get you started here. Um, Nova also makes the final four, but they lose a player. So a um, lot, lot of good sports over the weekend. I'm just, I, I love, I'm a sports nut, so I was, just on the couch most of the weekend. Didn't do any real craps work other than um, I did wrap up filming on my Headless Horseman series. So I did that most of the day Saturday. I actually filmed like 11 videos for the Horseman. I did the Horseman base and I did like like nine or 10 other like five minute videos of different alterations to it. And I'm gonna release those things uh, in the next couple of weeks while I'm, especially while I'm gone in Philly. So, um, yeah, when I'm in Philly, by the way, which is next week, I leave here Tuesday, I think. Um, I'll be, I'm thinking I'm going from like, no, Wednesday through the following Tuesday. Um, of course, I can't do shows like this. I'm still going to run the show, but I'm going to run it from the East Coast. I'll probably do some casino reports if I go. I'll probably do a bunch of wind crap stuff because I'm, all I'm going to have is my laptop. So I'll probably do some of the show, but it'll be more talking and, and wind crapsy kind of thing. So anyway, that's happening next week. Let's look at what's happening in the world today. Um, obviously, I'm still pumping the, the, the DiceCon, um, put on the gas for that for another month or so. Get registered, get on Jeremy's page, get in the Color Up Club. It's 100% worth it. 
Um, over the weekend, by the way, I also did um, the Dice DGen March Madness challenge with him, um, which was really, really, really cool. Um, he's got, if you don't know, uh, uh, Chris has got this channel called Dice DGen. He's right there in the chats. Um, so he's doing a series. It's like a March Madness bracket, right? We, and, we, and he and I talked. We did like a, I don't know, Chris, what we do? 20 minutes of, of bullshit and did our challenge and we talked again afterwards for a little while. It was super fun. Um, Chris is a great guy. It was good to get a chance to meet him and kind of get a sense of where his vision is for his channel and that kind of thing. But anyway, I did his challenge. Um, I'm not going to tell you the result. Go watch over there. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about it. Um, you go watch it today. Tomorrow, we're going to come back and we're going to talk about um, how well or poorly I did in that challenge. And I've actually got a show dedicated to um, the way to play in challenges like that because I also play in the Color Up tournament. So if you're part of Color Up's club, by the way, they've got a dice tournament that goes, there's actually multiple that go on during the year. And it's just, you know, it's you against, it's like a bracket system, right? You play against somebody and then the winners kind of move on. I have been traditionally bad, really bad at tournament play because I don't play a all or nothing strategy. I just don't do it that way. Um, but they do, right? The, these tournaments, you gotta go in and it, it's different. So I'm gonna do a, a tournament special tomorrow. We'll talk. We'll talk all about that because I think there's a different, a different set of rules that go along with, with tournaments and, and the ways that you play it. But it was really, really fun. So we'll talk about that. And I want to spend some time this week talking about the Craps League. Um, I'm getting some, some good requests on that. I think it's just time to talk about, let's get that thing going. Jeff um, had an idea of something similar, and I want to talk to Jeff offline about this. Jeff at Mid-Atlanta Craps, by the way, um, about that. And then we'll have a couple of, of announcements, I think, coming up here along that line Maybe next week. We'll see how, how, how this shakes out this week. So that's all that. Get on the casinogaming.tv website, join our Discord, get in there and start talking with us, and we will see you there. Now, moving ahead, um, I'm going to introduce a new segment um, in our show, which will run every single day. It's called the YOLO. Um, I'm going to run out to my table, and I'm going to take one shot every day. We're gonna, you know, these everybody's doing this uh, build a bankroll, go to one hundred thousand dollars thing. I'm, just, I'm gonna do it right here. We're gonna YOLO it every morning, and what I'm gonna do for the YOLO is literally this. I'm gonna go to my table right now, and we're just gonna YOLO it at this minute. Now I've got white chips in my rack. Okay, the white chips represent thousand dollar chips. I don't have any yellows um, yet. My chips, by the way, I've been ordered. I have no thousand dollar chips, so I'm gonna use whites to represent thousands. And let's just say. Let's just say, Buckeye, that I went and um, I, I put a buck in a slot and I hit the jackpot and I got 20K and it's burning a hole in my pocket. Burning a hole in my pocket, right? Let's go ahead and burn $20,000 as fast as we can. We're gonna YOLO it right now. Here we go. We're gonna go ahead and drop 7,000 bucks on the table, right? And we're gonna go 6,400 across, cause, cause why not, right? 6,400 across feels like $1,000 per number and we're gonna have to do uh, 1,200 on the six, 1,200 on the eight, and we're gonna get back a little bit of change here. We're gonna get back 800 bucks and change, back to our rack. And I'm not even gonna scout the table. I'm just gonna y literally YOLO it. Let's say that the, the, the game is on, and I'm that guy. I walked up and I just dropped 20K on the table and stopped the whole process, right? I just stopped the whole thing. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm John. Right, I'm Greg's friend with the cowboy hat. I'm here I come. And I'm just gonna drop 20K on the table and you all have to wait for me. $6,400 across. Can the shooter who's currently going avoid the seven for one roll for old John? That's all I wanna know. Can you avoid the seven one time for old John? And here come the dice. He just set the dice. He's got the hard way set. He's throwing them soft. And what happens? Aces. Nothing happens. What a freaking waste. What a waste. Now I gotta sweat for one more roll. Can this guy, can this guy make me a thousand bucks right now? Can we do it? Can we do it? Six, two, eight. Woo! All right. So a twelve hundred dollar eight is gonna pay fourteen hundred bucks. Right? We'll do fifteen hundred for one. How about that? We'll do fifteen hundred for one. Live to fight another day. So the first day of YOLO, we made some money. How about that? How about that? We made some money today, YOLOing it, and we're gonna do this every day. We're gonna see, can you actually go to a casino, 
and hit one hit and down and make any kind of money. Can you do it? Well, we're doing all right so far. We're doing all right so far. It looks like I got a little bit of profit over here. Um, I've got 1600 bucks on the, on the good side from that hit. So all said, all done. There we go, the YOLO day one, we're ahead. It's pretty fun stuff. So every morning we're gonna kick the show off. Matter of fact, before I even say hello, we're gonna YOLO every morning. So there it is, right there, that's, that's the thing. Now, back to the actual show. I think that's kind of fun to do. Um, we're gonna do this. <laughs> yep, 3500 bucks up, going home. Can you do that every day? I'll update, I'll update the score here as we go in the morning, and here we go. Um, for, the, for a little bit of a fun, kind of who cares, kind of a, <clears throat> Kind of a thing every day. Anyway, I want to talk to you today about hedging, um, and and that's the the theme of today's show is going to be hedging and why you might want to hedge. And the, and the reason why I'm going to talk about this is two reasons. One is um, this kind of came up today in Jeremy's color up. Actually, it came up yesterday in the dice court. Somebody was asking about hedging, and invariably, when somebody says hedge somebody else posts back or they put in the comments here or the chat live, hedging is a bleed. I guarantee you somebody's already written it and hasn't pressed enter yet. Hedging is a bleed, hedging is crap, hedging is stupid. If you hedge, you lose, um, which is true to a certain extent. But the way I think about this, and I may be wrong, I think that there's three ways to hedge or three reasons or three types of hedges. And that's what I put up here on the screen. I, can't, I gotta point to the right, it's opposite. Um, one way or one reason why you might want to hedge is simply to protect your bets, right? <clears throat> and these are normally where you hear people say bleed. Hedging is bleeding, right? This is going to be, and I'll show you an example here in a minute, where you've got your $5 pass line bet and your $1 any craps, or you've got your, your $5 don't pass and a dollar on the yo, right? And those are your bleeder hedges. Um, you're saving a line bet or you're dropping money on a hard way if you're on the don't and the point's eight, you drop five bucks on the hard eight or something to try and save or try and reduce the number of chances of losing. And hedging to protect a bet to lose, those, this is where you're gonna hear people say hedging is bleeding, for sure. Um, and, and that's interesting, right? It's an interesting way of, of looking at it, I suppose, right? Um, <clears throat> at higher levels, I can see where you'd want to do that. I wanna show you a little bit here at the table the reasons why you shouldn't always do that. There's times where it makes sense and there's times where it really doesn't make a lot of sense. And I wanna look at like the numbers behind that and let's kind of make better decisions with that. Then there's the, this middle tier of hedging and this is where a lot of folks, and, and I think Jeff would, would, would probably raise his hand and say, here's where I am, um, in the hybrid section, right? Hybrids are hedges, right? There's no other way to say it. You're, you're betting everything, you're betting this to save that. And you're doing the hybrid betting, the hybrid hedging, not to win, right? You're doing a hybrid play, which is a long-term hedge that you're probably gonna get out of at some point. The idea between that head, by, of that kind of hedge is to have it sit there and never actually have it pay. If you're a hybrid player, you never want your hedge to pay. You wanna play your hedge, let your, your, your targeted bets win, bring the hedge away, and now you're in full profit. That would be the ideal situation for a hybrid player. It's a long-term thing. You're gonna tread water for a long time. And I think it's by design. You're gonna hedge, 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 tread water, tread water, tread water, and then wait for the good one, right? That's to keep you there. It's a right side play for the long roll. And I can't look at a hybrid and say a hybrid is a dark side play. The hybrid is definitely, to me, it's a right side play, and you're using the dark side to protect you until the good roll happens. Otherwise, you're happy more than happy, a matter of fact, you're ecstatic to tread water waiting for it to happen. Last week on Friday, I think it was Friday, it happened, right? Friday I had that miracle roll where I had like, I don't know what I had. Jay, well, Jay, I know Jay, JR has the numbers, right? I think it was like 10 fours and seven tens or whatever the hell I had. It was crazy that day, right? You're waiting for that. You'd hedge all day long. You'd, you'd hybrid play all day. And when that roll happens, man, you're there and you can just beat the crap out of that. Now, the last kind of hedge is what we call penny plays. And the penny plays are interesting. And, I, and if you watched my video on the power hedge, the power hedge is a penny play. Um, it's purposeful hedging. It's hedging that's designed to not make a whole lot of money, but it's designed to not lose ever. Like you hedge this way for the purposes of winning all the time. It's kind of like booking the house a little bit. If you can get there, it's like booking the house. So I wanna go to the table 
actually, and work through all three of these types and just give you some examples of them. We can roll a little bit of stuff out, but it's really about the example of what these things look like. And I think um, if, I, if I give you one more little screen here, the way that you calculate these things out and what I'm gonna do over here <clears throat> is look at your expected number of wins versus your expected number of losses versus your core, right? For example, $5 pass line with a dollar any craps. Dollar any craps pay seven to one, right? Um, so it, it saves your line bet, but you're gonna only win that thing one out of nine times. You're gonna lose it eight times. So eight times you're gonna lose a buck, one time it's gonna win seven and save your $5, that's it. That's a, that's a ridiculous, um, it, the delta there is seven, that, that's ridiculous. I think that's the kind of thing where some say hedging is a bleed. Because if you don't win that thing five times, it costs you a full bet. I'm gonna show you that here at the table. So let's go zoom into the table. We'll take a look at some hedge options here. Ah, here we go. Um, let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the, well, no, I gotta, I gotta take my YOLO. My YOLO stack's gotta go away. Let's move that over here. All right, um, let's do this. Let's look at the pass line hedge first. Let's say, and again, we'll do it at the $5 table because it's easy math, okay? $5 there and a dollar here on the any seven, or on the any crap. So this is one of those typical sort of come out hedges. And the same thing could be said really to a lesser degree on the don't pass, right? If we have a don't pass bet, sorry, pass line and that, and the don't pass with maybe the yo and maybe hop in the reds right, something like that, where you're really just giving it away, right? Think about this bet here. Let's do just the pass line and the any craps, okay? This bet, we said, is gonna lose eight times, eight times to one time that it wins, okay? There's, there's four ways to win it, there's, 30, there's 32 ways to lose it, okay? So it's, a nine, it's, it's nine to one, basically, that you're gonna lose this bet. That's a crazy amount, and when you think about if it loses once, twice, three times, four times, five times, right? So five times you got a bet through that maybe we'll win, maybe we'll lose, okay? Now though, when you've, when you've lost this five times and gotten a five bets through, one of those bets gets eaten up by what you hedged on the way out. So every five times this doesn't win, you're basically giving away a whole bet, okay? And I think of it this way too. Each time it doesn't win on the come out, you put it in here, you get a come out eight like we had the last time, right? That bet now is worth four bucks. So yeah, you, you, you burned a buck, you saved yourself from losing five, but you diluted that bet to where it's worth only $4. And again, five $4 bets does not equal 25 bucks anymore. It equals 20 bucks. So think about that. You basically, you're giving away a whole bet. If this doesn't pay off one out of five times, which it won't, it's gonna pay off one out of about nine times. Think about that. That's the bleed. When people say hedging is bleeding, this is what they're talking about. And the same thing holds true on the don't pass with the yo. Right, you hedge the don't pass with the yo and you're in the same exact position. It's longer, right? This is gonna come out whatever, two out of 36 times. So one out of 18 times, you're gonna lose a buck. You're gonna lose a buck 17 times out of 18 times, right? To save that. Probably makes sense when you're here at the $15 level to now you're gonna, okay, now it's worth it to do it, right? Great, so 17 times you lose it. And again, those bets, you give away a whole bet. By bleeding a buck out of every one of those come outs, now it's worth 14, 14, 14, 14, and 15 times later, you've burned a whole bet. And when you're at the $100 level and you're doing you know, $6 or $8 on the yo, that adds up really quickly. And giving away a whole bet to me over time, hello, there's your, there's not, it's not the house edge, that's you giving it away. Remember when I told you that when I open up my casino, Casino Del John, um, Casino John is gonna have no edge, right? We're gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna pay you here what you're supposed to get paid. This is gonna be a 17 to one bet or 18 to one bet here, right? I'm gonna pay you right on these things. But you're gonna be a dumbass and you're gonna hedge anyway. 
right? I'm gonna win this bet so many more times because you're gonna put so much more money. You're gonna lose more money here before you win on it. I'll still make money on you when I do this edgeless, take the house edge off those bets because hedging in this respect, the one roll hedge to save a bet, that's a bleed. That's where you're gonna get hammered, okay? So there's, and that opportunity exists everywhere, right? If you're at the $15 level and you do a dollar yo, and I'll, I'll do it here, I don't have a hopping sevens, but if you do a dollar yo and $3 on the seven, you actually can't hedge it. You can't be making up because that wins 15 and you lose three, you win 12, you lose 18. Okay, so you didn't lose 15, but you lost most of it, or you, 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 you earned some of it back rather. You, you can't hedge enough to make it worth it. Even if you did six bucks up here and a buck in here on, on the seven on the come out, you lose 16 bucks, you lose 20 bucks, and you win 30, okay? You won a little bit there, but every time you lose, every time a number gets set for a $15 bet, you're giving up seven bucks, which means your bet down here is worth eight. Think about how much these bets become worth when your hedges, your one roll hop hedges don't pay. It's ridiculous. Now, there are long-term hedges or one roll hedges that you can pull down that make a little bit more sense, okay? For example, on your come out for the don't pass. Let's say, let's say you're betting at the $15 level. I could see this as a hedge, a $30 nine, $30 no nine, lay, lay the nine for 30 bucks for one roll, right? Or lay the 10 or the four for 30 bucks for one roll. And if you can avoid the three ways to roll that one time, you save this and you pull the hedge down, okay, that I can buy. Right, a one roll removable hedge is a great, a one roll hop hedge is gonna crush you over time. Now this will hit. You're gonna lose that bet, you're gonna have a come out 10. Come out 10s actually, you know, oftentimes happen, as do come out fours, as do come out nines. These things do hit, and when you go down 30 bucks, now you're stuck with a bet that's worth less than zero on that hedge. Your hedge failed you, that bet's not worth 15 bucks anymore, it's worth negative 15 bucks, you gotta win this thing twice. Now you're in a spot where, okay, well shit, I lost that bet, now I gotta come out here with all these odds to cover what I just got whacked for up here. So you're gonna fight that hedge game, there's no math that works on hedging. It's impossible to win that game when you're hedging, but that's, again, the protectionary hedges, the one roll protectionary hedges, again, if they're hopping, Really, really, really bad idea. They, they, they bleed you, they dilute your other bets too much where it makes any sense at all to me. I believe that the short-term one-roll hedges are a different story, a different story. We'll look at the ricochet. Let's actually get a point here real quick. If I can get a point, let's see what happens. We got a, a nine, right? The point's gonna be a nine. And if I ricochet in here, and if I put 30 bucks as a lay bet on the nine, to try and get a $10 don't come out. One roll hedge, right? A one roll hedge, avoid the nine for one roll, right? And here's what happens, right? It works, you get a seven here, so that 30 pays 20, you lose your 10, you actually end up being up by 10. That's a good hedge, right? A one roll hedge is fine. Let's say that we roll that same situation and the nine doesn't come. Let's say it's, here's an eight. Great, this goes to the eight. You can take this down and now you're cool, right? Your, your bet got there in some kind of protected form, and that's gonna be okay. That kind of hedge I'm, I'm down with, right? Because I can take it down. Um, you know, there we paid, it, it paid itself once, and one time it didn't, uh, or one time it did its job and it's great. If the nine happens to hit, and that thing goes to here and you lose 30 bucks, well shit, now you got work to do. Now this bet is worth minus $20, right? And you gotta do the math in your head, that bet now, my hedge failed me, if I, if I were to roll um, the nine, that hedge would have failed me. This $10 DC is worth minus 20, which means you've got to do at least a $30 lay to get that money back. You're already here, now you're here, and your hedge is now costing you volatility to your bankroll. You gotta go out here and, and kind of come out and re regain the lead here 
to cover that bet. And you gotta do that math in your head when that happens. So that's, that's kind of the one roll sort of protectionary hedge look. And again, you gotta do the math on this yourself and say, if I do this, and we come out, let's come out to something, hopefully that's an actual number, there's a four. Come out to a four this time, right? This goes away, that right there is now a $4 bet. You might as well just put it right there, it's a $4 bet. And over time, that's a bleed on your bankroll. Over time, you keep dropping pennies out here and these bets start, make, start meaning less and less and less the longer that we go. So that's the, that's the first part of hedging. The second type of hedge is this sort of a hybridish kind of play. And there's a lot of great, I'm gonna say great in air quotes. You can't see me, but I'll, I'll do it here, the, the air quotes. A lot, of great, um, a lot of great hedging strategies that use hybrid play. And a hybrid play is kind of a long-term hedge. And I know that a lot of you know this already, but let's roll it out here or put it out here as an example. And an example actually was given to us this morning by Greg at 555 Craps. And, I, and I'll put this out here. It doesn't matter what level we do this at. Let's just do it at the, at the $5. We, I guess I'll have to do it here. We'll do it at the $15 level. So we'll do $18, six and eight. I guess, no, we'll do, we'll do 12s, right? $12, six, $12, eight is what I think he did, right? And a $10 field, right? Or a $5 field is probably the way, right? And that's, what is that? $24 there plus five is 29 bucks. And if you were to lay, in his case, he's giving the example of laying the five for like 60 bucks, right? Again, 60 to pay 40, 40 covers the 30 you got out here. You're gonna basically win $10 or so on a seven. This hybrid style of play shifts the danger from the seven to the five. Now the five is your scary number. The seven earns you nothing, but this is a way to like hedge yourself through this thing and not get hurt too bad during the roll. You could also do it like this and have a five, ten dollar five, six, and eight. And let's say a thirty dollar pass line. What is that? 10, 20, 30, 5, 39 dollars, and do a forty dollar pass or don't pass bet. I've seen that. Right? Let's make it even fit. Let's actually attack this thing. Let's make it 50 bucks. Right. Here's a hybrid version. I'll actually line it up like an actual cross. Right there is the iron cross from the don't, where you got every single number covered, and you are the boss. Right, you're the boss of the table because you got them all. You got the five, six, the seven, the eight, and every damn thing else in between, right? How much do you actually win when you're doing it this way? Not a whole lot, not one in the bunch in here, right? These are gonna win you 14, you're gonna lose the five, you're gonna you know, bring back eight bucks every time on those things. Um, and here, you're trying to hedge the whole thing. Now, if you're doing it like this, this hybrid style of play, to me, that's a short-term thing. Let's actually, get a, let's actually get a point. Let's just get a quick point here. There's a nine for the point. That's actually perfect because it's not covered in here. And what you're looking to do here is win some targeted number, right? The targeted number to me would be what you have out here. You've got to find a way to win $35, $39, and then get rid of this bet, right? That bet's there long enough for you to win 39 bucks. Right? When you're playing hybrid style, you're doing this and you say, well, if the seven comes now, I'm gonna take a little bit of money, $5 off the table, whatever it's gonna be, um, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 times until we get the monster roll where I can jump from the iron cross to an across bet or something like that. That's fine. Hybrid play hedging is good. You got it all covered here, but you don't have enough anywhere to make any actual money. And that's the thing, because here you're gonna win, you know, there's one hit, for five bucks, and we're gonna roll and roll and roll. Let's see, it's a six, that's good. I'm just gonna roll this out really quick. There's a, there's 14 bucks on the six, minus five, right? Yay, nine bucks back to the rack. So you're gonna earn tiny amounts, and again, unless you wanna press it, and if you're gonna press your luck here, which we can certainly do, let's get that going, there we go. Right, we press it up, you're still at risk. And when the seven does eventually come, you end up bleed, you end up treading water. Right, you, you walk out of here with a $10 win instead of a $39 win, there's, our, there's your seven. All right, so you lose 39, you win 50, and you're walking away with basically an $11 profit on that roll. 
And that seems like a waste to me. You have all this cash out here and you're kind of treading water with it. But ultimately, that's not a bad way to go, okay? And I wanna give you this other kind of look at this thing, right? I wanna give you another look at this thing because there's this other way of hedging and I brought this up last week. And actually let's, let's well, we'll do it here in a minute. This other way of hedging, and this came up a while back when I was doing my Butterberg, my first Butterberg example. And let's, let's take a look with the Horseman real quick. I wanna do a, a quick Horseman. I'm gonna set it up the way I want to. We're gonna have 25 hours here. We're gonna get three come bets set, all right? And we're gonna get three come bets to all pay. We're gonna pretend that all three of these things paid off. We're gonna go, actually I wanna be at 100. We're gonna be at 100 hours on the don't. 325 hour bets, which is my, my, my preferred ratio. Let's say that all three of those bets had somehow paid themselves off, okay? Let's look at our rack. There's the three come bets that we started with, okay? And if you look at your rack in, in total, you know I like to get my rack reset as soon as I can. Technically speaking, in my rack, I'm down a quarter, okay? My three come bets went out, they got paid. I need to get 175 in the rack to where I feel like I'm actually even for this hand before I can do anything, anything more aggressive, all right? How can I ensure that I have a profit here? And this is an interesting hedge question because this came up live one day. How can I ensure that I have a profit here? Well, there's a couple of ways, okay? I'm gonna make you mad first, right? Way number one to ensure a profit is to pull the don't. Just pull it down. Pull the don't bet down, which does this to me. Here's my starting bankroll, and here's my profit. Lock up a $75 profit. Just pull the damn thing down, right? Everybody's gonna scream. No, that's the dumbest thing you can possibly do. Probably true, but it's a guarantee, right? Pull it down, guaranteed. Now, what if we did this? What if I took that 75 bucks, <clears throat> excuse me, and I placed the point, which by the way, if you don't know, you can do the, you can place the point yourself down here. You can, you can just cross the, cross the pass line. You can place the point on your own. You save the deal or the trouble. If you do this, let's look at where our rack was. We had 75 bucks over here in profit. Now, if this is the case, and we roll a seven, what would happen? You'd lose the 75 bucks that you put out there, but you'd win, I'll pay in greens, 100 bucks. Coming back to the rack, there's the 75 that we had that we'd put out there. Here's the 100 that makes our initial setup clean and an extra quarter. So by placing the point for 75 in this case, the seven actually wins you an extra quarter. You don't win your potential 100, because you can leave it there, right, and go for 100 bucks, but your rack might not be right. You can also even go out here for 100 and place the point for a full 100. And if you do that, if the seven were to come, right, you would lose this, but it pays right there, and your rack comes back, and again, 175 and 100, it's the same thing as pulling the 100 down, but if that nine happens to pay, 100 pays 140, right? 140, lose 100, well now you've won 40 bucks. Now your rack looks like, look at this, there's your 175, and now you have 115 in profit. So you actually get 40 bucks extra out of that deal. So sometimes <clears throat> hedging with a, with a targeted hedge on purpose ain't a bad thing to do. In fact, the whole idea of that ricochet or something like that, what if you did that? What if that was your play? What if your play was to go to the don't for a hundred bucks and you know take your shot, let's lay the four for 200. Maybe we'll lay the four for 230 because you know me, I like to hedge for more, right? Let's get a point. Oh my God, of course, right? Of course, boom. I love that that happened, right? Lose this and now that bet is worth how much? Minus $130, right? That bet's worth negative one third. Let's do it again. Let's get a point of something other than four. Oh, good Lord, look at this. Look at that. Two fours back to back. Can you believe that? I love my life. And there's a yo, which takes that. So three times in a row. Now we're, now, boy, oh boy, we lost 130 or 230 twice, plus 100. Now this next bet is worth minus 500 bucks. So we're doing great. 
Um, I do want to demonstrate this the right way though. There's a one, two, three. Cannot get out the gate. Come on, give me a number. <clears throat> There's an eight, okay. Just to have something work. You have an eight, right? Hedge comes down, that's fine. In this situation here, you could literally play this way, right? Lay the four, get a point, go over here and put, let's put 90 bucks on it. Let's place the point for 90, okay? You can 100% do that um, all day long. And what's, what's the, the good and the bad here, right? The good and the bad is you win 105 if the eight comes lose 100, so you're up five bucks. Or if the seven comes, you lose 90, you win 100, you're up 10. Here's a case where you are quote unquote book in the house if that's a targeted strategy, right? And I've seen guys do this. And I know that if you play craps for any length of time, you've also seen guys hedge on purpose not to protect the lost bet, right? Maybe a quick short-term hedge to get a don't number through so that you can place the point and book the house for 20 bucks, right? Let's, let, let's win five or, or win 10 every single time. And that seems silly. It does seem silly if you do it at this level even, but if you add zeros to it, of course, it makes more sense, right? At 500 and 450, you're making actual black chips on these things. So there's a way to kind of think about hedging as a play. Now, again, I'm glad that I rolled two fours and an 11 because it shows you the volatility of doing something like that. Those are silly bets. They can be seen as silly bets because, oh, let's lay the four. The four never comes, right? Well, bullshit, the four came twice in two seconds right there for us. So that does actually happen. And that was actually funny that it did. So that said, I kind of like this play. I kind of like if I can get a don't bet through, I like getting a don't bet through and, and placing it all day long, right? Because this here, that's the only time you're gonna be in a no-lose deal, right? This, you could lose a lot of ways. You could lose five ways, in fact, right? This on its own, you can lose six ways, which is kind of cool. This right here, cannot lose. Cannot win a whole lot. It's a penny play. I said it before, it's a penny play. You're gonna, you're gonna win five bucks or 10 bucks. It's not a big win, but it's a win on the regular. Now, if you lose this like I did, <clears throat> I gotta win this bet how many times? If I lose 230 here, I gotta win this bet 23 times to make it make sense, right? A little bit of a tough deal there, but that's a look at, <clears throat> excuse me, hedging for action, hedging as your actual play. I think that's not the worst thing in the world. People will say, John, you're a freaking idiot. You've jumped the shark here, but honestly, if you can get this bet through every time and just place the point, can't lose. That's the only time you can't lose. If you can get this bet through, place the point for less, you cannot lose. No matter what the point becomes, right? If the point's an eight, place it for 75 bucks, that wins 150, loses 100, you're up 50 bucks. On the five or nine, the 75 wins 105. You're gonna win either, either 25 or five. And on the six and the eight, you're gonna win five or 10, right? Once this bet gets through, at whatever size it is, you can place the number and guarantee yourself money. That's not bad, right? It's not a way to go break the bank. That's not a YOLO strategy by any means. That's not a one hit and down. That's not a in and out 20% win way to play, but that's a way to play for a long time and pretty much lock it in. And I've seen a lot of guys do this. Matter of fact, I did that almost same exact play um, for a lot of years when I was younger. Right When I was playing my cum ladders and my early days of learning how to play craps, I did this for so many years. I did a $5 don't come, unprotected, let it come out and place it. I did that exact thing for eons. When I would buy in at Atlantic City for a hundred bucks and it's all I had in the world, I did this all day long and I either tied or I took my two bucks and I took my two bucks and I took my two bucks. I took my $4 on the four and I was happy camper. Sit there for three hours, walk away with 80 bucks out of 100, right? 80% profit by just sitting here for hours and hours and hours doing exactly that move. So it can work, right? Hedging as an action play is not terrible, especially when you think about <clears throat> numbers, right? 
500 that goes to the five, right? That you hedge with 500 direct on that, that's two black chips. That's two black chips. That isn't two bucks. It's two black chips when you get to adding zero. I talk about adding zeros all the time. When you do things at the $5 level, adding zeros just adds zeros to it. So think about that. That's just, it's not the worst thing in the world. Now, can you hedge? Can you play the hedge game and actually win by hedging every possible combination? That was a question that came up to me over chat one day. And I thought, let me just run this out real quick. And I don't think you can, but let's try it, okay? I'm gonna set this up. I don't have hopping bets, but I'm gonna use my ATS area here to hop. Let's do an iron cross-ish kind of thing. Let's actually make a strategy here that's designed to win the field. It's a total field win strategy. Check this out. I don't think this is gonna work. We're gonna try it. Let's say I hop the easy eights for two bucks, and I hop the fives for two bucks, and I hop the easy six for two bucks, and I don't have sevens, I'll use the, the any sevens here, we'll hop the reds for a dollar each, okay? These bets all win 15 bucks. And let's go out here in the field for a five dollar chip. Now again, you can scale this up. This can be two, two, four, six, eight, whatever. Here's the deal. I've got two, four, six, seven, eight, nine chips out here. If any one of these things wins, it wins 15 bucks. 15 to one, they all pay, okay? But you lose the rest of them which means you're down nine bucks, okay? I'm sorry, eight bucks. You're down eight bucks if that happens. There's nine bets out there. Eight of them would lose, okay? Of course, all of those bets also take your field because, again, you're hopping things that are not field bets. What is your net? Eight and five is 13, right? So you, win, you end up losing 13 bucks and winning a net of two. So $2 net, if it's not a hard six or hard eight, okay? Any one of those bets, you net $2 by having a $5 field bet and always top. Let's make sure I got that math right. So two here, two here, two here, three here, okay? Let's say that, it doesn't matter what the number, let's just say it's a, let's just say it's a seven. I mean, who can, or let's say it's a, it's, it's a field number. Let's say it's a 10. Okay, the 10 comes, you're gonna lose all these. You're gonna lose nine chips. You're gonna win five in the field. So what is your net there? Your net's minus four. It's, it's impossible to play this game and actually win this game. I've, I've tried this every possible way. I th I'm sure other people have too. Um, it's impossible to, to hedge your way through and cover every possible combination of things that, that could beat you in here, okay? Um, Actually, in this case here, the field numbers themselves become the worst numbers, which is interesting. Five, you want, you want to get these numbers to hit more than you want the field to hit, unless you have your field at 10. <clears throat> and even the $10 field bet doesn't even cover it because again, here you're gonna, you're gonna lose eight. Yeah, you're gonna lose eight bucks on a six. You're gonna lose 18 bucks on a six. You're gonna win 15, you're still down three bucks. There's no way to cover it. And if you start adding in here like this, you increase your volatility. It's impossible to cover every combination. So <clears throat> think through this before you start doing this. And the main talk here is that. I don't want you to do this. Don't ever do that. That's probably, to me, the thing I see the most often. Dollar crap check might be the dumbest thing you can do at a crap table. That might be the dumbest thing you can ever do. I don't even care if you're at 100 bucks. 100 hour pass line with a $10 crap check still might be the dumbest bet you can do. Okay, actually you'd probably need 15 to cover that, but um, still, I think 20 bucks there, that's still the dumbest thing you can do. That right there will lose about eight times before it pays off, right? You're giving away a hundred bucks over the course of seven to eight rolls. I, I just think it's, it's a ridiculous thing. So hedging, one roll hedges, one roll hop hedges, bleed. Don't ever do it. One roll, YOLO hedges are fine until they aren't. And again, I gave you the example in real time. That was pretty funny that it actually happened, but um, even if we do it at a smaller level, 10 there and 30 and 30 on the four to come out. Um, if the, I almost did it again. If the four happens to roll here, right? This bet 
remember what it's worth. Remember what your bets are worth after you lose a hedge, okay? Here, in this situation, that bet's now a $4 bet. In this situation here, had we rolled, let's say, I, let's say, I, I wouldn't land this, let's say we rolled the four, um, where's the four? Let's say we rolled the four, that bet there is now worth minus 25 bucks. Matter of fact, you can put 25 bucks over here to remind you that you lost 30 to get five out here, right? You're 25 bucks behind on that bet. So you gotta think about the math of how you're betting these things. And I think hedging is a, hedging is a tool. Um, it's not always a full strategy. Just remember that as you go. I think hedging as a, as a full action play, it can be okay if that's what you're gonna do, but if you're gonna hedge just to save shit, don't do it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go anywhere near it. Hot magic. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting my coffee here. Yeah, the hop magic can work. You can hop shit all day long, right? Hopping is fine. Um, if you're progressing the hops and you're hitting them, right? But I'm honestly saying, if, I'm gonna get my, my camera on. If you're gonna hedge one for one, like that pass line with the craps check, that's just gonna, it just reduces the size of that pass line bet or the don't pass the 11. It makes your, your bets worth less over time. It's just a bad way to do it. I think it's just a bad, bad way to do it. Um, and Greg says this, um, it's a horrible strategy. Um, it's the come out thing that, that crushes you on that one, right? That one, if you can get past the come out, the, pa the, the don't pass with a, with a full hedge is a great strategy if you're past the come out because you can't lose. It's the 22% of the time that you lose that come out. And it's not always 25%, right? The, the come out seven will crush you or you know, if you can avoid the, whatever you're hedging up top. Long term, that thing will work, but you're gonna, it's pennies. You're gonna win a buck, two bucks, three bucks as you go over time. It just takes forever to get through it. So there is all that. Um, you like um, the no four, no 10. Um, yeah, I don't know. To me, let's go back to the table real quick. I, I think this is an important point to make. It doesn't matter what you do, right? The, the, let's go to a quarter on the don't, right? A quarter on the don't, let's take all these things down. You gotta ask yourself in this situation, dice probability wise, with the puck off, what's the least likely thing to happen? The least likely thing to happen is that, right? Or the fives, right? That's the least likely thing. So you, 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 you go for that, right? The cheaper thing to get a quarter out there is to do 40 bucks on the nine, right? 40 to win 20, it's not quite covered, but it's less money, right? It's $10 less, it covers you most of the way. That's a better way, or you can even go a $30 six, right? You're two extra rolls of the dice, 30, and here again, right? You're gonna try and be Mr. Math Guy, $30 six with a $5 hard six, and now you got like, now in the seven rolls, right? You didn't win enough, 30 wins 25, you lose a, you lose a nickel. There's no way to cover all your bases, but here your exposure is 30 versus 50. So ask yourself, what am I willing to risk to save that bet? If you wanna go pure probability, then here's where you go with the 10 and maybe some hard 10 action if you, really, if you really wanted to do it. But getting this bet through, it, it's interesting. I don't know, there, there's this mindset about this and I, and I think, I go back and forth, honestly. I go back and forth. There are days where I say, you know what? You work so hard to get that bet out. It's a lot of work to get a don't pass bet through. 22% you're fighting on that seven and the 11 to get through that thing. If you get through there, you're the hammer. Even if the point's here, you're still the hammer. Greg will tell you this, you are the hammer and this is the play to make most of the time, right? Just laying the thing for 30 bucks next to it, that's the play because you have the hammer. But I'll tell you that this, well, not 25, but 24, isn't the worst play either because you're guaranteed to win. This, you're likely to win. You're most likely to win than lose, although you will lose that bet with the eight is the point. About 48% of the time, that bet's gonna lose. Think about that, that's the actual numbers. 48% of the time, the eight beats the seven. Here, 100% win rate. Can't lose, right? If you get it through, put yourself in a spot where you can't lose. House edge, sure, I get it, but you can't lose. If you get a spot where you can't lose, then don't lose, right? I think that's interesting. Um, anyway, there's all that. There's so much to do with, with hedging. 
we can do a week on this because there's just so many different ways to hedge and put things out there. But I wanted to give you kind of a high level look at, I think, and I'll go back to my, my screen here that shows them, the three kinds of hedges that I, that I see. Let me go back, can I, get, can I go back a screen? Come on, I'm pretty sure I can. There's the YOLO page. Sorry about this goofiness here. Come on, got There we go. The three kinds of hedges I think are important to know what you're doing. Know what you're doing, right? Are you bleeding yourself on purpose? Are you bleeding yourself on purpose to save a bet? A one roll hop hedge, it's one of the worst things you can do. And in all cases, right? In all, and we were talking about this last week. In the don't pass, don't come if you, if you hedge the 11. Remember, you have two ways to win that bet. But there's three ways you're gonna win on the two and the, and the one two. The ace deuce and the aces will win three ways versus two ways to lose on the 11. Over time, not hedging the 11, you'll win a little bit more than you lose over time. That's the better way is not to hedge that bet. And the pass line can be said the same thing. The 11 and the seven so far outpace the two, three, the 12. It's just not worth it to bleed your bankroll in those one roll hops. But I can absolutely see a hard way hedge when you're on the don't, right? If I get a, a eight is the point dropping a hard way bet to reduce my, my exposure, I'm down with that. That's actually okay um, to, to reduce your, your chances of losing there. But again, you're reducing your win, your win goal, right? If you have $50 in the don't and it's an eight and you put a $5 hard eight out there to protect it or $10 hard eight to protect it um, and you win on the seven, you actually win 40, not 50. Remember that. So you're, you're reducing the, the effectiveness of the bet you're protecting when your hedges don't pay off, okay? Um, so, does that make sense? I hope that that's an important thing. When you lose your hedge, you reduce the effectiveness of the root bet. A $50 don't pass with even a $5, let's say you don't pass goes to the eight, a $5 hard eight to win 45 out of the 50. If the, if the seven comes, you lose the five, you don't win 50, you win 45. Your net is 45. You reduce the effectiveness of the best payout in the freaking casino, which is a one-to-one -one when you're the favorite. That's the greatest bet you can have. And you lost a percentage of it. Matter of fact, you lost a good percentage of it. You lost 10% of that bet by trying to hedge it. So think about what the hedging does to the root bet. That's an, I, I can't say that any other clear way. You crush the root bet by doing that. So there's that. The hybrid play, the survival plays are good as long as they serve a purpose. I'm gonna do, if I'm hedging to survive, okay? And let's go back and show it again. If I'm hedging to survive, this is a good time to use the place the point. Let's do a, let's do a, a, a typical, let's do actually, we'll do the six, seven, eight, right? And uh, that's a, it's a bad, bad example. Let's do, um, let's do a $50 don't pass and we'll do 44 inside, which is a very standard, run of the mill kind of a hedge play, right? And in here, let's assume you've won four bets. It doesn't matter which, which, which of the four bets won. Let's just say you won on the nine one time and there's 14 bucks. Let's say the six comes in and pays 15 for one. Let's say the eight comes in and pays 15 for one. And let's say, sure, the five, and the point was 10. Let's say the five comes in and also pays 15 for one. And now you got some profit, right? You've got 44 in here, you've got 45 right here, plus $11 in profit, and you've done, you've done work, right? You've done work, and you're done. What can you do at this point? You can let these things play out, for sure. You can also drop 30 bucks out there and place the point. What happens here? You keep playing in here. You keep on playing those numbers all you want and press those things to the ceiling if you want to, right? If the seven comes, you're not getting hurt in here at all. You already got your profit out of here. If the seven comes, you win 50, you lose that 30, you actually profit an extra 20 bucks when the seven comes. If the 10 happens to come, okay, sucks. You lose your don't pass, but that's gonna pay down there, right? That 30 is gonna pay you, uh, it'll pay you 60 minus your VIG, and you're actually up by 10 bucks on that thing, right? If you're gonna hybrid play this thing, the minute you hit goal or you hit even here, place the point if you're hybriding it out. Save, save your bets, right? Keep playing this, right? But hedge that thing off, right? That's the time to do that. Um, otherwise, 
you're, you're still at risk to win nothing, right? You're still at risk to win nothing in that situation. If you don't do that or pull the don't down, you got, you're still exposed to win zero. In that exact example that I gave, let's put that, let's put that money back. Let's put it all back. Let's put all this back in the rack. I'll leave that there. You have your 44, you won. Let's see, let me get to the red, the reds back in the rack. You won 45. Right, there's your profit, your quote unquote, quote unquote profit, which was the 45 bucks plus the 11 in profit. And if the seven comes right now, you, all you got is that $11, right? You're, you're barely treading water there if, this, if, this, if the seven comes now. If you had only won two of those bets or three of those bets and the seven comes here, you're actually losing money. So there's a point in time where placing the point for something makes sense if you're in the hybrid system. If you're looking to win this bet, and that's your hybrid play is to win 50 bucks up here and then go for the seven, then you gotta pull these things down. Then get rid of all this shit here. Put all this back in your rack and be a, and be a dark player, right? Either pull these down and let that, let that bet roll or place it and let these things roll. You gotta make it this, you gotta pick a side, right? And I think hedging this thing off is picking a side. I think pulling the, the, the inside bets down is picking a side, one or the other, but the hybrid play will end up eating you alive if you don't pick a side at that nexus point. Once you get to even, I believe, you have to pick a side once you're even in a hybrid play. If you don't do that, you're gonna burn, 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 burn all day long, right? Um, once you get there, you work hard for it, pick it and go. So there we go. That is, um, that's my thoughts on hedging. I know there's a lot there. I have not read any of the comments. So let me go and look here and see um, if there's anything to be noted here. Um, yeah, um, you're right. Uh, um, um, Duracell's uh, called me out here. I, I, that's why I say, I, I think you place it. Maybe I covered this later, but you don't wanna pull the don't bet. It doesn't make any sense to pull it down because you worked hard for it, especially when you can place it. And and Duracell, I'm, I'm thinking more, more along the lines of placing it for less, but to a point where that lesser bet would win, you know, and you can, you can lock up five or 10 or, you know, five or 20 or whatever it's gonna be. I think it's good. I think it's not a bad thing, especially when you're on the hybrid side. When you're hybriding it, that's when, to me, it makes the most sense. So, um, yeah, you're right. And this is another good point that you made. I think you made this one earlier, but um, the thing, yeah, when you lay the back wall, you're giving it up. Right. If I lay the back wall for 200 and I have a, a 25 hour don't pass bet out there, that don't pass bet is actually worth minus five bucks because you lost 30. It's 25. It's actually you're actually already down five dollars before you even start the hand if that bet even pays off. So you got you to think about those things. The math there absolutely guarantees. And you're right. Piece five says um, the guarantee comes at a price. It does. Let's talk about that. It comes at a price being my profit. So I'm gonna go back to the table. I wish I could put the table here with this screen. Maybe I can. Can I, hold on, let me, let me try something. Cause I'd, I'd rather just, you don't need to see me. You can look at this. Oh God, it's upside down. How do I change that? Ugh, let's go back. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Let's go back over here again. Um, it, it can eat your profits, right? But again, if, if you're doing it, for the purpose of making a small profit, then it's fine, right? And like I said, if you're, if that's your, if your play is literally fifty bucks here, and I don't know, twenty five, thirty five, forty two, right? If that's your play, cool, right? You win eight or win one. Either way, you're winning. You're guaranteed to win. It does cut into your profits, right? By doing that, by placing the point for forty two bucks on a six or eight you're potentially throwing away 50 bucks. Your potential profit here is $50. And you're, give, you're saying, fuck that, I'm gonna go take a $2 profit, <laughs> right? Knowingly giving up the profit to do this may not be a smart move in your mind. And I get that. I don't, I'm not saying you should do this. I'm saying that if you get to this point, you cannot lose. How many times can you say you can't lose? This is the one time you can say, I cannot lose that bet. Now, getting to that point, is a risk. Getting to the point where this bet is through is a lot of work, right? You worked really hard to be the, to be the big dog. You worked hard to be the Andre, and you're gonna say, yeah, you know what, we're gonna take Andre and put him in the corner and not let him wrestle. 
I get you. I totally get that, right? That's a, it's a weird thing to wrap your mind around, but again, if you're looking to guarantee yourself on every shooter or the shooter that you're in, guarantee yourself money, that's an okay way to do it, man. If you can get that bet out there, guarantee yourself walking away money, I'm okay with it. I really am. Um, the more, I, the more I, I work through this stuff, I'm more okay with that than I am with the one-term hedges or the one-roll hedges. I think that's kind of where I, I come from, Greg, and I hope that that makes sense. I'm not advocating that that's the way to play, um, but what I am saying is that if you want to do this action-style penny play, it's okay. You're going to make money, right? You're going to make money um, once you beat the come out. So there it is. That, that's, that's the... Um, that's it. I, I, again, I'm not really picking a side on any of these things other than the, other than the one roll. The hop, the hop, the hops I don't like. Um, trying to hop, hop hedge I think is a bad move. But a hybrid, in, and again, hybrid, pick a side at the point. Get yourself even and then pick a side. That's, I think, the, the key to hybrid play is that if you don't do that on the hybrids, you're going to lose for sure. Get yourself to even. That's the hybrid place to get you to even point. Pick a side and hedge the point and go light, or pull all the light side stuff and let that don't pass go. Either way is fine. The penny plays, again, it's an older way of playing. It's, it's an older way of playing, it works. It's a grind. It is the ultimate, ultimate grind. So, um, let's see. What else is being said here? I'm looking at some more Greg stuff here. Um, yeah, you're, yeah, it's financial suicide. I, I see what you're saying, Greg. And, and again, I, I called that out. It, and I did it, right? Didn't I lose two fours in a row? I went ugly, ugly. Two fours in an 11. I, I start 500 bucks down. There's no way to recover from that. Trying to, to do a penny play. For sure. You cannot penny play down 500. They got to change your, you got to change your strategy right out the gate there. But if you can beat the come out roll, you're right. The 22% chance of getting your butt kicked on the come out roll, once you get past that, you're, you're in good shape. So there it is, guys. That's hedging. Um, all the options for hedging that I can think of to talk through and give you examples of. So there it is. Um, anything else you want to say? Um, yeah, you're right. This is that is the come out, right? That that is the, that is the problem, right? <laughs> I understand perfectly what you're saying, Greg. That's a huge problem, right? Um, you can protect yourself, right? Twenty two percent of the time losing that if you if you lay the four or the ten or the five or the nine. You can mitigate that from 22% down to about 13%, which is okay. And if you're betting at high enough levels to make those, those, those direct, the direct place bets make sense, and again, two or three of those before you get beat, you can be done, right? And again, adding zeros also helps there too. So anyway, that's it. I just wanted to make sure that we talked about it because there's confusion there about how to make that play. I think that that placing the don't point is a confusing play for a lot of people. And I really wanted to call out how do you do it, not so much as a play, more so for the hybrid players. For the hybrid players, placing the don't point, I think is a really important thing to think about. So, um, or it's an option that I think most people don't think about exploring. Because again, you can just, you did all that work, right? Think about 44 inside, you take four hits, and the seven comes, and you end up walking up with $11, which is a joke. If you place, if you place the point, from the don't, you walk away with a guaranteed at least 30 or 50 bucks, whatever you had on the don't, you walk, you're guaranteeing yourself profit. That's a play that I think people forget about. I think that's pretty important. Um, yeah, I don't consider the 230 loss a penny play. I consider it a penny play that I went, when it, when, let's say that um, we lay 230 on the four and the 100 hour don't gets through, right? Now it's a penny play if I place the point, right? So hundred dollars in the don't, four is the point, or the, the five is the point. I placed the five for, for 75 bucks. The penny play is the quarter that you'd win on a seven, right? Versus the hundred that you could have won. That's why I say it's a penny play because you're portioning down your wins. And we can, again, look at that. Again, I think it's important to see the number on that. So let's, let's make that exact point because I think you're, you're spot on. Let's go back to the, the, full, the, the full note here. 100 on the don't, and I'll do 225, 230. We'll put it on the 10, because it's right in front of me. So laying the 10 for 230 on the way out the door, that's not a penny play, right? That's a, that's a, that's a oh shit, I'm about to lose 100 bucks on an 11 or 230 on a 10 play. But assuming we can get that bet through, let's just try it again. What do I get here? I get a seven. Um, so great, so the seven comes, 
and the 230 pays 115 minus VIG, right? I end up walking away with 10 bucks. Okay, yay for John, we got a $10 win. The point of that play is not to win 10 bucks, although it is 10 bucks that goes into your rack. If you're doing the penny play, you're fine. Let's avoid the 10 for a roll. There's the four. Now this is down. And because that's down and the four is the point, if I, I don't have 75 bucks handy here, but let's actually get rid of this money from before. Um, if you now place the 10 or buy it for 75 bucks, this is the penny play. The penny play here is you're gonna win 150 on a 10, so it's a net of 50 bucks, or you're gonna win 25 on the seven. You're gonna lose 75 and win a quarter. So you're either gonna win 25 or win 50 on that kind of a play. That's why I say it's a penny play. You got 330 in action, and you're looking to win 50 or a quarter. Such a small percentage of what you had out there at risk, but again, that's a guarantee. Once you get past this, the come out, that's a guaranteed win. So yeah, it's a penny play because it's such a small little load off of the initial bet. Like I said, I'm not advocating that you do it. I'm just saying that's a, that's a way to, that is a way. It is a way to play. So there it is. Um, good conversation. And I did this this morning. Uh, I, I think Greg does this a lot too, where let's, let's put a controversial topic out there and talk through it because I think it's important to talk through these things as craps players, because you have to consider all of those things as potential options for you, number one. A lot of people do those options, um, but I think it's important to, to know what the, what the cost of those options are. What's the cost of hedging the come out, right? The cost of hedging the come out is that it costs you a full bet at some point. The cost of hedging um, in play is that it dilutes your wins. The cost of, of doing anything is a, is a dilution of profit. It's a matter of if you're making that your actual strategy is I'm going to dilute my, dilute my profits on purpose or am I gonna say I'm doing it to save less losses over here? So there's that. Um, let's see. Um, Wayland says hop the horns in the seven for the same amount and you would lose a back wall problem. So, yeah, I, I don't know. The back wall lay to me, it's not a hedge. <laughs> I use the back wall lay to win on the seven, right? To me, that that's an attack an attack mode thing. The back wall lay with with horn bets in there. If a point number gets rolled, you lose you lose your you lose your back wall number plus the horn bet. It's a double loss. Now you now your now your place bets have to win double to make up for both. I don't like doing that, frankly. Um, it makes sense. Um, yeah, you're right, Greg. So in that case. And I said that earlier, right? You got to win that bet 23 times to cover one loss. And if you did that, right? If you're doing this play to to grind all day long, then you're gonna that you're you're okay with that, right? If you're doing this play as a as a two or three of those and you're done, kind of a thing, that's fine too. Um, to me, if I get whacked like I did earlier today, you're gonna have to change strategy. You can't you cannot fight back. You cannot fight back from from 2:30 down. There's no way, right? So. Again, is that a is that a way to to go out and play? I don't know, Greg. I, I probably not. By the way, gourmet latte today versus regular drip. So um, there we go. Yeah, Brian is the hedger, right? Brian. Well, Brian's not a hedger. Brian's a hybrid guy, right? And look what Brian does, right? Brian on those plays where you've got hundred dollars on the don't and twelve on the on the yo and and three on the twelve and you got money everywhere, right? When the seven when the when the number gets set that don't pass bet's worth like 64 bucks in the end, right? That don't pass bet is so diluted, right? And he, he accounts for it, he knows that, and he's making his plays in the box to cover that, but that's a dilution of that strong bet on the way out the door, so it's it's a tough deal. Um, anyway, I don't, I know Greg hates that, that, um, that uh, what do you call it, the, the, the full, the, the full uh, place to point thing. I get, and I get why, right, this is a great, point to it, right? You got to win it so many times to make up for it. I get it. I get it. Um, and I'm really glad that I hit it today. I'm glad that I, I'm glad that I whacked that four today because it makes the, it makes your point perfectly. Um, cause it does, cause people, people say you can't hit the four. Guess what? We did it today. Um, all right, let's get out of here. Um, let's see. Yeah. hundred percent. That's got to, you know what? Maybe Greg can do a show on that James and I can do it as well. Um, I definitely think, um, I think recovering from these things is an interesting thing because we give you the, like the glory path 
all the time, right? And I did it today, right? Hey, let's let's just, you know, whatever, lay the nine and come out here and now we're good and golden, right? But then you get burned by that damn thing. What do you do in that case? Because you can't come out here and hope to win 23 times to get over that. You gotta do something else. Greg, I've seen a lot of people, and Brian does this too, right? That happens, enormous lay bet goes out, right? And you start playing from behind. It's hard to play from behind. So um, let's see. Um, all right, um, I think that's it. And nothing else, it's 9.15. We're a little late today, but that's okay. I'm actually, um, I'm actually uh, got an early morning, or easy morning at work today. Um, Greg, I do too. I hit fours all the time, you know me, right? I, I actually lay the five and nine more than lay the four and 10 because I hit the outsides more often than I hit the inside numbers. It doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter. The dice decide for you that day that you're not gonna win, you're not gonna win. And uh, you know, you can chase that lay all day long and get beat by it. All right, cool. Let's get out of here, guys. Um, good discussions as always. I hope that I spurred some thought. Sounds like we're gonna have a couple of videos from Greg and other people on ways to not hedge or ways to uh, recover from a loss or whatever we're gonna do, cool, go for it, get out there, do videos on it. That's what we want, right? We want, I want thought um, in the world. So go think on things. Um, that's it, have a good day, everybody. I gotta get to work. Um, yeah, see you tomorrow. Maybe not, there we go.